This is the start of two. <sighs> you put visual reference in videos because you may not be watching with audio. <sighs> One th okay, yeah, so we are now officially doing code review. Walkthrough. Refactor. I'm not, I don't think I would need to refactor because I, I know, I know, I, I know. I know something. I know something about what, I know what's coming. <laughs> uh, so first of all, top level, looking at like the repository itself. Um, sync the upstream. Um, so in general, I tend to, so there's, there's two main approaches to repository, like project, repository project management, I guess, or whatever. There's mono repos, which is one repository with a lot of stuff in it. Um, apparently Google has a mono repo approach and they have like one repository that has like thousands of commits a day and everything's handled in just like different parts of the, of the, mon of the mono repo. Um, the advantage of that is that there's fewer things. The disadvantage of that is that the thing that exists is more complex. Um, the other option is the one that FreeMoCap uses, which is a uh, poly repo, which is like you split up the functionality into different sub repositories that are smaller. So like we have FreeMoCap proper, but then we also have uh, repos for, um, you know, SkellyCam and these are like for website. I should change these pins. SkellyCam, SkellyBot now, uh, Skelly Forge is where we're doing like post processing and stuff. Skelly Tracker is where we do the tracking. Skelly Viewer is kind of old. Skelly Synchronizes uh, for synchronizing videos. Um, and the idea is that you basically, Skelly Cam is kind of the main one. And um, like the main example and the first one that we made because uh, Endurance and Dayhan uh, noticed that like a lot of the complexity that was in main free mocap was related to camera. So we pulled that into a separate repository. Um, so the question is like should these be absorbed into the main or should they be split off i'm pretty sure in this case they should be absorbed um yeah and it's kind of it's kind of a rel yeah but it's whatever um but yeah my preference and i think a standard preference is like a repeat a repository should have like one main entry point and then like yeah, like like this is the source folder this is the main folder not you, you usually want to call the folder main um, anyways, I'm getting, I'm getting, it's fine. <laughs> it's great. Um, the main thing I have run into with this when, uh, in the past is that these, uh, add-ons require, um, dependencies like OpenCV and stuff like that. And this one does not, um, and dependencies in, in Blender is kind of like an annoying thing to deal with. So, uh, I got bonked out of, uh, some of the video stuff at some point because there was like. OpenCV stuff involved with it, but I think we already talked about that. It's whatever. Um, I'm gonna. I have already been folding that in on my side. So, um, okay. In the main part of the repository, uh, this is typically I. Uh, I. Oh, and I, you're you're putting the version number in, which is awesome. Um, oh, there's another README in here. Oh, look at that. That was another thing I was gonna say. Um, is put something in the readme, but I see, I see, I see, I see. So I'm, I misunderstood the, so this is kind of, you're treating this, this is like a toolbox. I see. Um, and then this is kind of like, it's own, this is its own internal world. That makes sense. Um, you typically wouldn't, this, there's nothing super wrong with this, but, um, putting, so a zip file is a binary file. Um, as opposed to like human readable text stuff. And in general, you kind of want to limit how many binary files you put in a repository. Um, just cause like Git doesn't really, that, that does it's not like what, Git can't really do anything with a binary file. It just says that it exists and they tend to be much larger, um, than raw text files. But like in this case, this, this is a, like, and the, the problem with Git is that stuff stays in the history forever. Um, so, uh, like I recently had to do some like, like deep, annoying get work, scary, scary, annoying get work to like, because I put like video files in the get like a long time ago and like it was making the whole repo bigger. Um, 
So again, like in this, this is only one megabyte though. Like I don't think it's too, I don't think it's a problem. But in general, like I think in this case, what you really want is a release. Like you want to make a release of this, which we can do on our side, um, which will work well with the Zenodo thing I did in the last video. Um, but typically what you would see is you would see someone would make a release um, and then you would attach the like the zip files and the binaries here in uh, that first of all it allows you to keep the binaries out of your git history and also sort of gives you more control over um, when you like when you make a new one because like uh, the one of the sort of uh, one fundamental ish problem I have with with wait where are we with with this strategy is it's good that you tag it with the version number which is actually the solution to my concern which is that this is not necessarily synced up with um with the code here um and i don't know how you're managing your versioning if you're just doing that manually or if there's because there's automated ways to handle the version bumps um but anyways putting this in a release is sort of a way to be like the instruction set is always just go to the release, the latest release and install from there. Um, and then you can also have like, you know, specified release notes and like instructions and stuff like that. Free we're, we don't do that as much as we should, but we are the next 1.1 will have that structure. Cause we now have binaries, which is exciting. Huh? Da, 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 da. Okay. Um, assets this is technically kind of in the same space um but I, it, these are so small and they, they these really want to be with the code because uh yeah so as long yeah these are all kilobytes can i view you as a text file no that's okay um but yeah, and it's like, and you got to, it, it's, you know, in an assets folder, which is good. Um, and you have, you do have a readme. Yeah. This is what I meant about the, uh, like, dependencies. Like, if you think about the average Blender user, um, high percentage can do that. Not all of them, but most people that use Blender for animation can do that. This is going to be outside the skill set of a lot of animators. Um, so it's, yeah. Especially, this is something I would have bunked off of a thousand times. Um, to install SciPack, one run this command inside your Blender Python folder. I've, I've, I spent like months, like, what does that mean? <laughs> inside the folder? Where's my Blender? Where, where does Blender Python? I had to like look in my computer. It's, it's, so I think I actually made a script in my version of this that does uh, install those dependencies by script, so you don't have to go dig around. Um, but the main point here, oh wait, actually, <laughs> I need to start doing this. Uh, Aaron called me on this before. I was like, literally the next line is you fixing that problem. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah. This is probably why I bonk off of things for months at a time is because I I get to the part where I'm like, hmm, and then I don't read any further, which is both something I need to work on and also just something to be aware of. People do that. Like, so be mindful about, like, the order of presentation and whatnot. Um, not because you're wrong, just because it's, like, statistics. <laughs> the, the more people that look at your thing, statistically, some of them will get confused. And you just want to make, like, that percentage number as low as you can. It's not because people are stupid. It's just law of large numbers. 95% clarity versus 90% clarity. You have 100 people. <sighs> Mesh attribution. Love that. use license I think that's fine for us I don't know the rules if it's not we'll figure it out 
I do like this skeleton. The face is weird, but the the we talked about this before, like the balance between like anatomical correctness and uh, you know low poly. We we like it. Okay. And yeah, other than that, looks good. Uh, poly repo, mono repo, blah 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 blah. A lot of that, like these are kind of things that are sort of like I'm saying them out loud. Um, but a lot of this is like one of my favorite terms in software. It will be obviated um, when we start working in the same branch, fork, whatever, on the same like you know PR into the same thing. Obviated means like it it doesn't need to be fixed because it's just kind of gonna go away. Like it's not like <laughs> the concern was obviated by the new event. Like uh, what's a good example? It's like <laughs> oh we gotta fix the roof. It's like oh wait no a tornado tore the house down. The roof problem has now been obviated. <laughs> Not, uh, I think that's right. I might be, it's, it's close enough to write to say it out loud. Okay. Um, let's change the color. Oops. Control P, color theme. Yeah. What are you thinking about? Since when is that a hard prompt for you? Control Shift P color theme yeah i've been liking this beautiful green recently green beautiful okay um so the other thing i know about this code base is it is in fact well a a type of code a, a, a software architecture that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, it is, in fact, a mega script and a special mega script where it lives entirely in the init file, um, which is a, which hap I noticed happens a lot in Blender add-on stuff. But a mega script is similar to like the mono repo versus poly repo split. Um, it's like, is do you have a lot of files or do you just have one real big file? advantage is that with a lot of like the typically you want to have a lot of small files it's just that's kind of easier in a lot of ways but to do that you kind of have to like understand like how imports work and you have to like know how to use your IDE well enough to like jump between files like without you know easily um, so having a mega script makes life a lot easier because it's just one thing um, <laughs> Uh, and so that mostly what I did in, when I was uh, refactoring this was break it up into different pieces because Andres, uh, I've seen a lot of mega scripts in my life, and Andres is is one of one of the cleanest because even though it is a mega script all in one giant file, this is a six thousand five hundred and forty five line file. Um, it is in fact. Uh, broken up into classes and functions and it does have like like nice clean definition dictionaries and stuff like that and oh uh, he does the nice I used to do this a lot in my MATLAB days where like I do spaces and stuff to make the, the stuff line up and I do agree that it looks nice but there is something unfortunately that you have to get used to it. It takes a second to get used to it. It feels bad for a while, and then eventually you're kind of like, okay, I'm over it. Uh, you, and you kind of see what's happening. You see why it's doing it. And the and the thing that isn't that starts to become annoying, and that thing is uh, auto format. Just let, there, let, let the linter decide. I think this is using a variation on uh, black. Uh, which is an auto format schema and it just goes through and just like it's like no you don't put a bunch of spaces to make them line up you just have one on either side uh, no like you don't make your files have really long lines they are the lines can only be this long and then we split it for you and it's like it sucks because at first you're like no I don't like it that way and then eventually you realize that it's nice when you look at code and it always looks the same and I know that you have a preference. Your preference has merit. Like, yeah, I agree. Aesthetically, that looked nice. The problem was is that it, first of all, you had to like, you probably had to do that manually. Um, and 
not other and and like you could make that happen automatically but we but most people don't and so a lot of like the linters uh will um the linter is the thing that like does where is it it's it might take a while it's such a long file like this thing where it's like oh you don't have this package installed like the little red squiggly line is is your linter um and these like the yellows are warnings um, that you should like, like you get them especially in Python, but you can make VS Code. I forget how to do it, but you can configure VS Code to do all this stuff. But um, the yellows are kind of like warnings, and one of the kind of rules is like treat the warnings like they're errors, um, and just like it's a style guide thing. So yeah, it's like this this guy here is like, oh, I don't like it, um, and you know, often with with code, you're always fighting complexity. Um, complexity is unavoidable as tools get more bigger and more complex. Um, but the more complex it is, the more likely it is that there's some crack in it and some crack in the logic that will lead to a bug or a crash or an error. Um, and since, yeah, so anything you can do to make, to minimize complexity is good. And often minimizing complexity means minimizing decisions that you have to make. Um, so. In this case, we use Control Alt L, PyCharm, it's a PyCharm default. Um, you can also right click this and say, ref, hmm, where is it? Reformat code. Um, or just like I could run like, do I have black installed? I don't. Anyways, whatever. So, by columns. I'll miss them too. Um, do -do. Oh, uh, PyCharm also is nice enough to tell you when you have imported something that you don't need, and it also has, um, well, right click, uh, ref who cares? Control Alt O, optimize imports, and then they go away. These are red because it wants this to be running in uh, a Blender, and it doesn't, it can't see BPY in my Python 3.2.11 or whatever. So that's why it's sad. Um, and butter in the tribe. Oh, it's some. It's not happy about this for some reason. Who cares? Um, ooh, this is also ten generally uh, like from blank import star. Is it's common in other like I know it happens a lot in like JSTS land, um, but. I, I personally don't love it in this world <laughs> because now I don't know what, like if I see something like, like what, where did you get out of this? What was the ones that, what, what were you, what down here is from <clears throat> in here? Um, so just import stuff by name. Um, <coughs> get this, control B. Yeah, so if, so now it's like, I can't tell where this is from. Uh, da, 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 so I'm actually, eh. so the way I would fix that is I would, this in a file this big, I don't, this is going to be, well, I guess we'll see. So I'll comment it out. So now we're not importing it. And so now we see that some red pops, some reds popped up over here. Um, where'd they go? Hey. Mm -hmm. Oh, OS. Okay, but <clears throat> in VS Code, I think you can do Control Period, and this one in PyCharm, we just do uh, Alt Enter, which I guess is Context Actions. Yeah, Context Actions. So context is like where you are. So the actions that I can take because of where I am is oh, import OS. I knew it. you can't see it, but I know it's there. Um. Did I delete the wrong thing? Ah. Oh, and now, okay. Also, yeah, imports happen at the top. This, this is a rule. Is there anything, is this like behind an F or anything? No. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah, again, like, so this is another like mega script. So typically with a mega script, 
what happened is the person started working. So it's especially happened. Yeah, you start working, you just keep adding stuff. Um, so I'm guessing that you added this last because it's the last thing you did. It's like exporting to FBX. If I do Alt Enter, import lib machinery. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. Control Z. We might not be running this. Where's the, who's the red down here? What it was? Who was sad in this region? Oh, the, oh, because this is something I had to have installed. I think. Hmm. Oh, oh. Okay, you're doing some some strange flim flammery over here, but I'm into it. What is going on here? Load the IO scene add-on. Okay. Oh yeah, yeah. So you're doing. This is yeah. I I do some similar flim flammery, not the same thing, but same kind of idea. It's like, hey, I want to have the code to this package available, um, and so you're like, looks like you're pulling stuff in. Source file loader. Source file loader is from import lib. It's interesting. I actually don't know this. I wonder if I could, because I don't like the way that I load the add-on. I the way that the add-on is loaded when I run it from free mocap. I'm not a huge fan of how of how I do that. Um, oh look, it's giving a little ghost thing for the for the raw argument. I like that. I noticed that it does that in WebStorm. I, I like that it. It's basically telling, it's like, well, you haven't keyword argumented this, but I'm telling you that you're filling in the full name here um, because I can, whatever. <sighs> okay, so, oh, interesting. You have, this is just like a, comment on comment off thing there's probably something you can do to determine which one's which oh and also the global variables global variable global variables are also tend to be are also generally like to be avoided main reason is that it like it's the sin of global state um like you are defining something in the global environment that's going to change the functionality of the individual functions so what that means is like if i'm looking the more, the more, <laughs> it's so much, uh, collapse all. So if I'm looking at like what's happening in this function here, um, depending on how comp, how much you've configured the global state, uh, let me rephrase, let me rephrase that. When I'm looking inside, in a, inside of a function, I would love, I prefer to, I, you want to be able to like know what's happening by looking at the code. But if there's stuff defined in the global state that's affecting the functionality here, um, then that's just harder to interpret. Um, you can do, so like imports are kind of, actually imports are local, like local to the file. Um, like when you import something, it's available like within that file, which is, I don't think that's the right way to think about it, like at the in the guts. Um, but it's a, you know, practically speaking, it's a fine enough analogy, um, which is again why like having like a mega script is sort of prop challenging is because it every it's it's now a larger context and the larger the context, the harder it is to wrap your head around. So, yeah, endurance said something to me once with like, like, a lot of these like rules of like clean code and how to make software. Um, are purely for your own, like our own understanding. Like we as humans with our finite minds uh, are trying to make these like unbelievably complex logic problems, like math problems really in the at the end. Um, and it's, and we, yeah, it's too big for us to keep to, to do, it's hard. Um, so we make it easier for ourselves by by doing these sort of things to minimize complexity and break this up into smaller pieces and blah, blah, blah. Your CPU doesn't care at all what your code is written as. Like it can't tell the difference between, you know, an elegant 10 line solution and a hundred line, 
you know, spaghetti scrap, you know, like, you know, in some levels, you know, the interpreter might be able to tell that they're longer or something like that. But like, if they are logically equivalent, they're logically equivalent. Like, we're, so we do this kind of for ourselves. Like, obviously, like if I, if and when I when I broke this up into little, little littler pieces, it was logically equivalent to the mega script. So like, there's no way to evaluate whether or not one is better than the other, other than like how easy it is to work with. Um, and so you know, so these are all sort of like guidelines. It's very like the what's what's the like the Pirates of the Caribbean like pirate code thing of like it's more like a set of guidelines. You're allowed to break any of these rules whenever it makes sense to do so um if it makes sense to do so but just understand these are the rules for these are the rules for a reason and oftentimes it's like break the rule because you'll kind of see where you where you'll get burned or you won't either you will you won't get burned by it like you make the call this time it's worth breaking the rule and then if it works out great if it doesn't you'll be like oh (laughs) now i see um okay. <clears throat> Doopa doop do. Can I run this in Blender? Oh. I wonder if that I wonder if that empty folder thing happens because I had it open in VS Code when I was doing the switch over here. <clears throat> okay, here we are. Big ol' in it. Oh. Oh. Um, <clears throat> this mini map is also does help a lot with the with the mega script stuff. Oh, by the way, um, so I'm using PyCharm Professional, which is a proprietary paid thing. I get it for free because I'm like I work at a university or whatever. Um, PyCharm Community is uh, free to use, um, and the difference is not substantial. Um, I am an open source zealot for sure, um, and you know part of me hates them for being closed source or whatever. Um, but it's, for me, it's like, it's the best tool for the job and, you know, you don't, don't get extra points for leaving tools on the table. Uh, I use it because it is functional for me to do so. I code faster and better using the more powerful tool. It is a more powerful tool because it is a more specialized tool. Um, and, um, yeah, I recommend you do it too. You are, you are, if you're using VS Code to write, you know, Python, you're using the worst tool for the job. I know you can configure it to do the same things. It's clunky. It's slow. You can. It's faster in PyCharm. These are my opinions, stated as such. Ah, <sighs> okay. Who? What are you said about call expression not allowed? Ah. Uh, is there a quick fix? Ah, no. It's just a warning. Um, oh, I see. Wait, what are you doing? Why are you sad? Who are you? Oh, um, it doesn't know how to handle. The linter is confused by the blender. Blender's doing something the linter doesn't like or understand. It doesn't. Call expression not allowed in type expression, PyLance says. Um, It might be because it can't see BPY. Anyways. Okay. Yeah, 132. I'll bet you're updating that manually. Here's another issue with the Megascript stuff is like, no, I may have already said this, but like, um, the SciPy method is here in 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 the in it in it in the initialization of the add-on. Um, so there's no way around the dependency thing. There's no way to make it like work in most cases. Then it's like throw a warning if you hit that part. Not that you would really want that, but like, you know. Oh, you actually put it behind a bool. 
if statements are also kind of the enemy because anytime you have an if statement, you have like two possible ways the world could be. Um, but they're like, you know, they're unavoidable, but it's fine. Where are you sad? Cannot find implementation. Of oh yeah, because it's not in the not in the package. Um. Oh, I see. Yeah, I see. So you do you do have that. So again, it's kind of a global state here. We're now. Um. Do do do. SciPy available. Control B. Ooh. Yeah, a bunch of places. Way down here though. Oh, I see. You put a warning if it's not there. Oh, okay. I do actually like that. <laughs> um, I would just like it better if it was in a smaller file, I think. If it wasn't 6,000 lines away from the from the place that you used it. Um, the other thing about uh, smaller files is that in in this age of, of the machine, smaller files are better for copy-pasting into AI and, like, getting easy answers and you can pick and choose which parts of the code you care about when it's like pick and choose those files and plop them in um, especially with the skellybot uh, interface because it's in blender or discord um, okay let's see if we can run this I'm actually not sure if we'll be able to so good old-fashioned you're gonna do a walkthrough you go to the entry point you go to line one you put a breakpoint right on top. You don't have to, you can scroll down or whatever, but that's what we're doing here. Um, all right, so we have, for the folks at home, we have in the, we have the extension, Blender development has been installed. Uh, we have run it for the first time. Our Blender is not, so by default on Windows, if you install Blender, it puts it in your program files folder, which is outside of your user folder. So if you try to install dependencies to that Blender without elevated administrator privileges, it fails. Um, so you can either move the, the install location to your user folder. Um, so it's like for mine, it's like user slash John Ma slash uh, Blender Foundation and stuff and stuff's in there, or you can run. I guess in this case it'd be VS Code with administrator privileges before you run it, because the first time you run Blender development it installs Debug Pi and some other thing, and then it will crash confusingly if you don't have those permissions. But we have we've done it. Hooray! Blah blah blah. Um. So now we're here, and I have also set up <sighs> How is this going to interact with this thing, with the multiple who's it's in here? I think I might have to... Hmm. Okay, figure it out. Uh, who are we? Okay, Alt B B. I don't know if this is gonna work. Run four. Someone's. And then it, it runs Blender with, attached to your debugger. Um, add on not loaded because add on not loaded cause none listed. Um, don't report it to Microsoft. It doesn't matter. Okay. Um, independently of this, God, I really want to be back on Linux. Although, who knows if that would be breaking. Yes? Did I move something recently? Huh. 
Okay. What was I gonna do here? I was, oh, um, well, okay, before they finally made control comma go to preferences like they should, uh, free mo cap. Yeah, let's disable these guys. Bye. Alt, is that, did I do that? 132. Cannot call remove tree on a symbolic link. Uh, that's probably all. So that I, th this it means that it's a it's a shortcut in some ways, which I am now wondering because I said the previous thing. I wonder if this is because oh, I moved it to the user folder outside of the main one. I also like look you can't like. Oh no, that this is not that one. There was some other place I saw where like <clears throat> it it did that thing, and for some reason the way it was set up, like you could never read the full path, it, and it was just like. But this is not that case. Um, so let's see. So we are in home Janma Updata roaming. I don't, I don't understand how this stuff works. Blender found like the roaming local app. I don't know what that is. What's roaming with local? I could ask the machine, but I don't want to. It's the voice memo thing. Just like, that's the thing I was asking for. You, like push the button and voice happens. And if it exists. Microsoft repository. Might be too new. 61,000 repositories. Fluent UI. This is that thing I saw. Is Fluent a them thing? Here's VS Code proper. Oh, VS Code proper. Oh, it's Electron. That means I can go steal their code. Neural speech. Shut up. <laughs> See, this is this is uh, Microsoft, so I can be mean to them. <laughs> Unified modal speech text pre-training for spoken. It's like when I see these, it's like Microsoft stuff, and it's like like hundred forks. It's like that could just be the department. Like, who knows how many people outside of this actually have this. This might actually be a good, it's like dumpster diving. <laughs> yes, please. I don't know what you are, but I want you. Uh, anyways, focus, focus. Scripts, add-ons. Yeah, and so this is a, these are all shortcuts, which make get things things get weirdy. So they're gone now. Bye. Uh, e. Bye. Refresh. Bye. Okay. Now, also check this out. I realized that I can do something here for you, my viewers, <laughs> both of you. Uh, I'm joking, kind of. Well, I don't. Yeah. Point is that I'm not. It is non-zero, which I do appreciate. Would I do if it wasn't non-zero? We don't need to know that question. I guess we might find out later if, they, if, if it does drop to that. But I think there's enough bots that are crawling that they might trick me. <laughs> and honestly, I'm into that emotional support AI crawls. Um, Blenda. Okay. Window, window, capture method, window. 
Oh, you can't see what I'm doing. I'm setting it as a who's it, but because so now, just put that there. And if it gets, yeah. And also because it's on this screen. Having the the portrait mode mega screen does give options of doing something like this, but that's actually I actually don't want that um, in my work view. Cool. I did move OBS up, so now I'm looking. If I'm looking the here, I'm looking at myself. Uh, if I'm looking here, I'm looking at Blender, here at the main screen, here at the right screen. And if you haven't had the question of how easy it would be to use media pipe on my face with the gaze lasers to figure out which camera I'm looking at and then like do something because of that, if you haven't thought of that, believe me, I have. And someday, someday. <sighs> okay. What were, we, what were we doing? We were trying to, oh, we were trying to run it in uh, VS code. We got distracted by all this, which is going to happen again. What is this? <laughs> oh, man. I'm mostly right now responding to the fluent word because I fluent style guide, whatever, is the thing I heard, found out about yesterday. And that that really did feel like a holy shit. The thing that that is the name for the thing I've been tr I've been saying of like how I like to write code, where it's just like write the code so that it can be read like full English sentences. I think is the general vibe. Um, and there's a lot of instructions, and it's like, you know. React V9. I don't know what web components are. I just want to see pictures, but then I can move away. Yeah. What if you got? Okay, so it's just a framework, but it does have nice language. Yeah. I mean, I guess I haven't really looked into very many of these frameworks before, but skeleton different guy. Ah, Jesus, God. <laughs> I shall stay young forever because I live in a, I'm a like a cave fish. <laughs> Toast. Uh. Cool. Um, Later, and that's also I can like oh, demos. Ah, it is React though. I wish it was View. Maybe there's Fluent UI in View. Okay, nine o'clock. How many? How far are we in here? Four forty-three minutes. Alt B B. Is that the right place? Is this the one? Oh, wait. I realized I was, I did the OBS thing on the wrong uh, blender. Um, how are we doing? We running? We happy? We sad? Did we crash? Oh, we're pausing the debugger. Perfect. Mm hmm. Okay, that does mean that the the Blender instance that popped up when I did that is also paused. So like this whole screen is just gray right now, which is annoying. Um, because it pops up on, it pops up on the first monitor, which is the weird big, uh, uh, portrait mode one. 
That's fine though. But yeah, so it's pause here on the debugger, um, which is just, I can't tell you how big of an unlock it was to figure out that you could do this. Um, because now I can use the debugger. So yellow means that it's paused at that line. This is a special thing that you get with interpreted code like Python because it is not compiled into a binary like C++ or C Sharp or something like that. It's interpreted. So you do it line by line. REPL, R-E-P-L, read, evaluate, print, loop, REPL. I learned that on Twitch. Someone told me. Because I started doing, when I started doing that, like early pandemic, like I didn't know how to write Python code. I remember I was using VS Code and someone was like, why aren't you using PyCharm? <laughs> I believe that was oh, Zeka? I want to say it's a Z. I can't remember. I do kind of, I, I, I like Twitch streaming. It's just, it's, I just have a really hard time finding the emotional space in these times. Yeah, so now we're just stepping over. Uh, let me turn on that presenter mode thing. Control that. Uh, what is it called in this case? It's, it's not present. Is it present? In PyCharm, it's presenter mode. Over here, it's like, uh, what is it? Um, screen share? What is it called? Ugh, fuck. <clears throat> Just, again, I want to yell it at the robot. Um, ugh, total brain fart right now. I'm going to yell it at the robot. Robot. <laughs> Will this be, I just call it Python. It's really general, but who cares? Um, slash. Chat. Skelly, where are you? You're awake, aren't you? What's going on? Discord. Um, what's the VS Code equivalent of presentation assistant? I realize I'm not sure what they said. <coughs> Presentation. I, I was saying presentation mode, but I think they call it presentation assistant. Code snap. Wrong. <laughs> um, screencast. Screencast. And you turn off raw keys, otherwise it shows your like. If you type a password, it'll show it. <laughs> Um, right, but then I, oh, so that's the setting for it. And then I have to do control shift P to pull up the palette. And then I do screencast developers, toggle screencast mode, punch it. And now there we go, <sighs> which I said, oh, but you, that one, oh, hmm. So VS Code allows that one to have alpha transparency, but doesn't let you move it like you can in uh, JetBrains stuff. Like anyone that's been doing any free mocap stuff right now, I hope that you're just like periodically having geometric intuitions about sort of like <laughs> how 3D motion can map onto multiple two-dimensional viewpoints. That's ostensibly what's going on here. Oh, I guess I can also turn this bad boy. Well, also, but this one, this is nothing. This is not a... Um, oh, if, what if I do this? Because this is not the window that's attached to VS Code. So if I, what if I don't save? This is the one that is, which is a big honking gray <laughs> empty thing. So it picks the, f I guess it, it attaches itself to the first available blender instance. I was wondering how it would handle multiple blenders. <sighs> Sorry, I just realized I was looking at the one screen you can't see. Um, I guess you can see this, uh, but you can't 
that's fine. Um, uh, when we're done, when this is out of debugger, I'll, I'll scale this properly. Until then, and then this whole screen is gray, which annoys me, but it's fine. I'll put, I'll put <laughs> Discord full screen. See, can you see on my face? Yeah. See, look at look at the color from this direction. Actually, yeah, look at that, and then. I can't actually see it because it covered itself, but not a big deal in the daytime. But you know, it's also it's like blue light is technically ionizing radiation even from a screen. So, and I have so much screen real estate. <laughs> uh, are we on a timer? Well. We've passed the point of no, of like, there is now less time until my meeting with Andres than the length of the total video. Uh, <laughs> and I also absolutely, this start, I, I clipped this because I was like, oh, we should keep on topic, but it's just not how my brain works. It's fine. Um, and I, all oh, right. And then I went down the screencast rabbit hole because I was jumping I was I was uh, stepping over uh, and I wanted I wanted that to show up even though apparently they don't tell you what it is uh, jet brains they tell you what the keyboard is this one they're just showing you the keys which is whatever um, with a debugger you can continue which is just go until I hit the next breakpoint um, if it exists step over which is go to the next line step into which is go into whatever function is being called on that line step out of which is step out of whatever function I'm in and then restart is just, re, just rerun the command that started this thing I think and then in this particular case a disconnect is like oh disconnect like the debugger runs I think in like a separated server-ish process so disconnect is just to disconnect from that in this case I think that will also close the blender connection I don't know whatever um, anyways, so we're stepping through. Oh, right. So this time when we're stepping through, we are, st okay, life cycle stuff. Here's what happens when you, uh, when you open Blender specifically, I think what happens, it, it will go through this might be a particularly the blender development thing because it's somehow it like blender development is so it ran the init file which it's like which that init files are their initialization so it's like it, you're it's somehow trying to initialize this add-on um, I don't know if it's also going to be looking for init files here, I guess I can put a breakpoint here. Um, but that's also what I was like, wait, I'm not kind of sure if this makes sense. These are, so these are like, yeah, it's, I think you probably separated this for good reasons, which is separation of concerns is you recognize that this is different enough from your core add on that you didn't want to muck up this thing that worked by adding a bunch of new sort of unrelated complexity, which is, you know, good intuition there. Um, but now it's like, now I, it, like, I literally, I'm like, I don't know how Blender extension specifically is going to interact with this, which is not technically core. Like when I opened Blender, it hit this debug point kind of, I didn't expect it to. Um, but something in the guts of this was like, oh, I got to initialize this add-on. Um, I suspect that when it's done from this, it's going to jump into this one too. But I, I, sus I suspect that old Jacques-Luc uh, set up Blender development to like look through the Active Directory and just like initialize things as you see them, initialize stuff. I don't know. I could look at the code actually, but... Um, that would be a rabbit hole. Oh, I'm already doing it. 
<laughs> Real quick. I think I also like putting stuff on this side monitor is like a way for my, it's like that's off task. Main task, off task. Um, and this is also like, I'm like excited because like I now know previously I would bounce off TypeScript. I'm like, I don't know how that works. Um, now I do. Because of Skellybot. Because that this bot helped me teach this. This bot, this bot helped me build this bot. And this bot is built in TypeScript. The third iteration is built in TypeScript. The Mark III is built in TypeScript. What am I looking for? I am looking for what happens when you do Control Shift P, whatever my BB is. Blender. Oh, start. And oh, and what I know about VS Code is is it in the package.json? This is regular, this is just JS stuff. Ooh, commands. I saw it. Commands. On command. Blender start. Should I time box this? 56 minutes. We're almost at an hour, um, which is a very important time in any <laughs> incomprehensibly rambling dead streams life. Um, <coughs> let's see if we should bonk out of this at, at one. So we're speed running. Uh, use the tools, hit period, pop up a little VS code in the browser because it's Electron, so it's already the browser. Uh, don't, I'm going to bypass that rabbit hole even though I really want to. And I'm going to say, I'm excited about, I'm excited about like living browser life. On command, on command, where do you live on command? Or, and how do I search for on command? Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, is that a built-in? On command blender start. Package activation events. Oh, ooh, huh? Okay. So you get F, you get activated when we run these things, which I guess makes sense. This is all okay. So these are all the things that your who's it can what's it. Um, now, who is Blender dot start? Because we're asking the question. We have a reason to be here, which is uh, extension dot ts. That's the guy I was trying to remember. Who lives and who does live in the source folder? Um, here, <laughs> it's good stuff. It's like not shocking that it's in the source folder, but just like so, so like, oh yeah, that's the guy. Okay, so command dot start. Okay, here's your little wacky little naming convention, which I'm into. What? It's like, it's like, so all caps, so lowercase with underscores is called snake case. All caps with underscores is called screaming snake case, which is the best. So leading, the first word is all caps, and then the subsequent ones are lowercase is like, it's like a snake that had a temper tantrum and then calmed down. <laughs> it's like, uh, okay, so we're importing, so it's start, who lives down here, function start, blender workspace, blender workspace folder dot get, dot a Pascal case makes my heart hurt, but that's okay, um, from blender folder, which makes sense, um, and we're going to call that get, and if it's null, launch any, else launch debug. So we're going to try to get the Blender folder. So on start, ugh, what did I do? This is the problem with the browser-based VS Code. It's like I use, I, my mouse has like the back button on it, which I use regularly in my IDE. Um, to like, oh, let me go back to the top. Um, but in the browser, it just goes back. <laughs> uh, so, Belenda folder dot hit hit public status async. 
get workspace folder. This is a VS Code thing. Did I just say it in the joke way? VS Code? <laughs> uh, sometimes. This is what happens when you tell a joke too many times. It's like your face gets stuck that way. For let folder JavaScript. Let? Is it supposed to be let? I guess it is. Let folder of get workspace folders. Get workspace folders. Let <laughs> where are we at? Oh, we just we just hit one. Um, but I'm gonna put five more minutes in the machine because this is something I've, I like. Building VS Code extensions is like part of it. <laughs> Real quick. I just want to know what framework it is to use. Extensions, scripts, source, typings, typings, bootstrap. Okay, I don't know this stuff enough to look into that. Uh, Blender constructor, this folder, Blender. Oh, this whole thing is a Blender folder. Um, oh, okay, it makes itself. Oh, wild. Is that a factory pattern? I don't know. Is this a factory pattern? Um, URI, so it, it's it itself, so the its inner gut folder is a VS Code workspace folder. Um, build and debug, build Python docs. And this is all, I wish, this we're in, we're in Jacques Luke code, which I had to get blame on. This is the docs, which I don't actually know, I'm curious about this. I, I see a lot of people using Sphinx. I don't really know how Sphinx works, but I kind of want to. Um, okay, so it's not doing much work. It's just basically returning like a little like uh, zhuzhed up VS Code folder. Um, so I'll bet, oh, where was I? I was looking at Blender folder there. I was looking at the extension there. Command start there. Launch Blender executable as a guy that I get from Blender executable. And the question we're still trying to figure out, we have two minutes left to figure out uh, what we're initializing. Blender path data. Who's that? Path name is debug. It's not much, just an interface. It's just like a data data class is the equivalent in, in uh, uh, Python. Um, path name is debug. Okay. Whoop. One minute, one minute, 30 seconds. Oh my God. This dot data, get any predicate new. I might, I might not know that. Get fil uh, filtered predicate. Who are you? Um, blender type, promise blender path data. All blender paths. Config dot get executables usable blender paths filter type predicate fuck that is i don't know <coughs> config get executable config update um i think uh blender path data where are you defined Oh, you're the you're nothing, you're nothing fancy. Get filtered Blender path, all Blender paths. Blender path data config dot get. I don't know how to get into config. I, that feels like there might be some kind of built in. And this is a a list of Blender path datums. Um, item. Let user pick item. Oh. 
That sounds like VS Code built-ins. Nice. Nice. <sighs> Ask user. Still doesn't tell us um, all Blender paths. Still doesn't tell us the raw question, which is, is it going to find, is it, do, does it do something to like find and initialize everything? Um, this is cool though, because I do literally, I get this. This is, this is, this is, this is, this is working for me. Um, 105. Okay. I'm, we didn't get the answer to the question, but I'm nonetheless satisfied because the question was never the answer that we were looking for. Desiderata is the philosophy of science term that we're not going to talk about. Okay. <coughs> Uh, oh yeah, we're here in this import that I don't like. Let's go into you just to sort of look around. Oh, um, cause that's another, like, yeah, like this is, this gums up the global state a lot. Cause like, I don't have no idea what's in the global state now. Um, and, oh, cause also everything in here will get hit when you import it. So anything, any functions will get run and stuff like that. And I'm seeing duplicated code here, actually. Uh, I think. Like, oh, this is also quite a large file. Um, okay, slow down, we're not in a hurry anymore. We were in a hurry over there, but we're not in a hurry anymore. And I wanted Oh, the git blame is there. It's just it's barely barely legible. That's fine, actually. Okay, so you did add this. Um. Okay, so this is the git blame of this is from two weeks ago, and I did, added Butterworth filter function. I suspect that your workflow involves infrequent commits, because I was only two commits behind over here. So I suspect that you're doing a bunch of stuff locally on your computer and then committing rarely, and I cannot cannot recommend enough that you don't do that like commit all the time like 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 it's like quick save in a video game just hit it like you know if you can name it great like i'm doing this great but just the, if you think oh i haven't committed in a while commit just the you cannot commit a too small of a commit until unless it's slowing you down um that's actually like an automation I really want to build is just like auto commit on a timer, but with semantic labels, like let the machine like, oh, I'm doing this and just like make a little commit. That's actually super doable, especially with VS Code extensions, which I just had a little uh, upgrade in. My little uh, uh, branching skill tree just had a little ping, like just a little one, just a little guy. More of like an emotional unlock than a skill unlock. An awareness. Yeah, I don't know. I just got the gravity suit and I went down a door. I was like, oh wait, I can jump in here now. <laughs> this was blocked before. Uh, who are you? Who are you people? Where am I? What's going on? Do I not, ooh. How do I, hmm. How do I uh, VS code equivalent to PyCharm's uh, jump to breakpoint thing that looks like a blue hamburger? Go to next. No, 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 no. No, like go to where the debugger is currently paused, which is not actually what I said. So it's not its fault. VS Code, um, if you simply click on the highlighted line, ugh, if the focus is not, okay. 
Ah ha ha. There it is. Control Shift P. Uh, stack. Uh, focus on call stack view. That sounds wrong. Oh, is that what it's telling me to do? Call stack. <sighs> so they don't they don't have I think a, a neat little hamburger button. Oh, because I was just sort of I was scoping this. Um, I do think that there's some duplicated code in here. I think that in whoosh, it's the thing I saw before. I was like, "Oh, these shouldn't be imported here, or whatever." Um, FBX. There is something in here. There's so much stuff that happens, um, and this is in no way an indictment. This is just like memories of my own experience in this space. Like, there, like you. I, that's, that's actually interesting. I can see it in my own code when I look back at it. When I started to understand particular sorry, concepts and things like that, and like understanding how imports work and how like global state works and stuff like that, and like local and global scopes, I think is the term. Um, I, this is when I started like, oh right, and so like this kind of thing of like double imports. Um, and also everything being in a mega script with the with the, like, the educational smell that I that sent the <laughs> the educational scent I get from this is like oh this person does not have a good understanding of imports of how importing works which is completely understandable because importing things relates to uh, like scope and state and blah 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 like who can see what variable in what context and it also relates to understanding lifetime, which is a concept I'm just starting to come across now in uh, like the JSTS web dev space, um, where life cycle is, is like, is this kind of thing that I'm doing now. It's like, when I click run, what happens? Like what happens and in what order? Because often the order matters a, a lot in this case. So it's one of these things where it's like, I'm starting to really enjoy, I don't know, like, as I evolve as a scientist, educator, mentor, or whatever the hell I am and am now and am to become, um, you know, I'm thinking about like this type of thing in the context of like Skellybot based educational s modes. Um, like I can look through your code and kind of see the parts that I think that you don't quite get and then make like a prompt for Skellybot that will teach you that thing. <laughs> uh, man, Andres, I'm going to give you a Skellybot server. It's closed alpha right now, but you for sure, for sure, for sure have earned your <laughs> your place. Um, sometime in the next, I want to say week or two, it's, it's ready, I'm just tired. Um, I'll put it in the server and probably give it just like mod access so mods can pop chats or whatever just to kind of test it out and then after that I'll just open it up in the server and then after that I'll just open it up for everybody and say Skellybot is a gift freely given by the FremoCat Foundation God God help me please donate because we don't have any money and this costs money <laughs> uh not like a ton, a ton of money, but like, you know, we'll, we'll be you know, transparent because we are legally obligated to do so. <laughs> <coughs> okay. Um, okay, let's do right click and I just forget, what is it? Folding, how do you do the folding? Fold, 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 fold. This is actually control shift P fold fold all fold oh I, I also love the chords I really love the chords control K2 control K1 like the do this do that keyboard shortcuts love that because there's not enough you run out of like my I use like I don't have like open keyboard shortcuts in my life anymore. Uh, 
So yeah, folding is, is this. This is folding. Um, oh, right, the commit thing. This is where I got. So uh, part of the reason why part of the reason why you want to do a lot of commits is like right now, this looks like it was a copy paste thing. Like you copy paste either it was a copy paste thing. Um, or it was like swept up in a in like a much larger commit. And like the name of this commit that I can see here is added Butterworth filter function in Skelly parts, which I know you're working on for a long time. Um, and that is that, as far as I can, I think, has nothing to do with this I/O scene, scene FBX, whatever. Um, which means that this whole file was copy pasted in at one time in a commit that's labeled for something else. So I can't tell how much of this is your code. I can't tell how much of it is just because I know that like you grab from someone else's repo, which you're allowed to do, assuming that the license is friendly enough, which we, which we checked and it is. Um, but it's just, again, it's like debugging and stuff like that. So if there was a problem in here, I wouldn't be able to say, like you wouldn't be able to say, uh, no, it, it is not possible <laughs> to say. Uh, actually, you probably could because you might remember, um, but give it six months and you won't. Uh, like oh right I uh, I I added this like this part starts breaking and then it's like oh I added that recently I can tell because the commit said that I you know changed the whatever to whatever um, also noticing these these strings are being cast as bytes I don't know if that's on purpose um, my main thing here is I'm curious about how much of this is code that you wrote versus code that you pulled from somewhere else, which is another kind of like a skill level question, I think, because I think the bit you're pulling from, I think you're pulling from like the pro code somewhere, like some like, you know, like a, like not a hobbyist wrote this, like a company wrote this, I think, which no offense means I kind of would trust it a little more. At least it's in a domain that I have less understanding of, so I can't comment on it. Um, so I just kind of like, you want to know the term is progeny. Like, what's the progeny of this code? Like, where did where, from whence did it originate? Um, so, you know. Anyways, whatever. Uh, you know, a lot, a lot, a lot. You know, we talked about this offline, but like, just calling stuff out uh, as I see it. Okay, step out. We died. Oh. Oh. We didn't die. Um. But we did. Uh, oh, we, we actually, we passed, I think, because when I step out of, I think in PyCharm, when you step out of a function, it just, it pauses on the next line, but it's possible that, uh, that's where I want it. Oh, that's too many. Well, it, it's. Oh, I can do this. Ha. Um, I think in VS Code, when I step out of, it continued. And it apparently didn't crash. So, great. <laughs> um, but now I do want to kill it. VX, the keyboard. Yeah. The, I, I created these chords into the Blender thing where it's like Alt-B sort of like activates that we're doing blender stuff and then the next one is sort of like the internal alt bb and alt bs and alt bx kills it um <laughs> we didn't even get past the imports uh did i kill it i did kill it alt bb We saw earlier, like if I run this empty, it like checks for something. It does some default behavior. Uh, whatever, where are we at? Did we not? N? Alt? Who's Alt? I saw alt, but I thought that was something else. Okay, this is the place where I might, this is like where I start wanting to, um, oh yeah, just there. Okay, that's fine, that's what it should be, I guess. But why did it not, why did it get past the breakpoint? Unless something weird happens here, which is possible. 
Uh, Alt B X by Alt B B. Hello. <coughs> I should have done the break by twenty five minute thing on this video. I'm gonna start doing that later. Just like split by twenty five, and then I can auto process those to give them <laughs> a title, and then maybe auto post them, and then I never have to think about that step. <sighs> Maybe make like a playlist per day. Ah, no, you can handle that. Uh, wait, what is going on? Oh! Oh! It's because somewhere in the guts it detected that it wasn't installed. And so it installed it. And when it installed it, it hit the init. Uh, but subsequent runs, it's installed. So it didn't hit the init. Um, which means that nothing particularly interesting happens in the init. <coughs> mm. And also these ones get regenerated somehow. And it's going to be like, oh, remove add-on. And it's like, oh, I can't do the symbolic link thing, which we know about. Do I have that folder still open? I do not. Do I care? I don't. Yeah, here we are. This is actually some life cycle stuff for me too. Cause like I'm cleaning it out because this, I, I don't have full understanding of like what this, like, I don't know what this is, what this is, how it's doing and when it gets made um, <clears throat> at, a, I, I, at a Windows level. Um, I guess at a Windows Blender level. Um, so I just want to wipe it clean to start clean. Um, this is also why uh, I think it's, it's nicer to dev in Ubuntu because I think the life cycle stuff is like it's certainly the mo it's absolutely the most observable because it's fully free and open source um and it's also kind of like simpler windows is a kludgy kludgy mess <sighs> don't save and i also just like ai plus linux man that's that's the future that is the future liberals want holy shit like just just live in there live inside of there it's it's all open and i'll talk to you in english mm -mm. skilly skeletons we're just silly skeletons here so now if i hate alt bb It does do the whole screen over here is gray though, so that's annoying. Okay, what was it in this town? Ten, ten. Mm. Clickums, ten. Oh yeah, and also it makes the screencast mode in, in this town gives me the little red circle, which is which is cute. Do I still have this on? No, what is it this is? I kind of like the shake. Anyways, nine forty-four is the time. <laughs> Remember when I was like, oh, I'm going to cover the bottom of my screen because I don't want you to know what time it is because it makes me uncomfortable. And then I just started naming all the videos with ISO timestamps. <laughs> uh, okay, actually, that's a good point for like, there's just a part of me that's always just thinking as like a, a thinking in terms of data, thinking in terms of science and like the the time that it happened is part of the record. Um, so you might as well build it in. Um, it's like, will anyone ever look at this data? It's like, I will probably. Do I ever need to know that? It's like, no, but I want it to be there. Like, what if I, what if somehow the name of the file gets stripped? And I'm like, when was this recorded? Um, is that likely to happen? Um, no. I, I'm, it's unlikely to happen and I'm unlikely to give a shit. But it's just, it's good practice. Mm -mm, which is a I love the double entendre of, of the term good practice 
<sighs> 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. These are imports, they're boring. Uh, this is the little like SciPy thing. I guess I do have SciPy installed over here. Oh, it's a try accept. I don't. Um, print statement pops up there. It's fine. Um, okay. When I hit F10, it's either going to hop over this to the next line, or it's going to just continue and be done. Uh, at th at which point we will have learned if stepping out of a VS Code function in the debugger continues or if there's something in this star import like style mistake that uh, somehow bypasses the rest which is very unlikely because if that happened then none of the rest of the code would exist in the thing and on the assumption that this works which I'm pretty sure it does moment of truth yeah no one is shocked so Stepping out of the debugger in VS Code continues. Good things to have partial knowledge of. Why are you sad? It's MyPy. Do I have MyPy installed? That's like a type hint error. It's sad about type hinting. Is that built in? Did I add that? Because Philip told me about MyPy because I was getting so steezed up about uh, TypeScript. It's like, oh my god, types. Uh, no, uh, type hinting. Oh, uh, yeah. Philip is uh, the, the guy that whenever I talk about some great thing that JetStorm does, he goes and figures out how to do it in VS Code. But I really appreciate that relationship to keep me honest as a open source zealot. Um, but he's the one who told me that MyPy is the sort of the non-proprietary preferred method to make uh, Python act like it is strongly typed, meaning that like things like this show up. Not this not strongly typed, but this is a type hint thing. It's like, oh, uh, need a type annotation for empty positions. Like it wants me, to, it, it wants, and this one can probably, can you, what's the keyboard shortcut? Yeah. Yeah. Is it I think I saw what what is your equivalent of context? I also will eva evaluate in debug console I really love. It's possible that someday I will like have the right combination of factors in place that VS Code will be coextensive with the JetBrains is um why did you give me that thing? <clears throat> You're giving me a different... This is... Do you want code to open my pie? <coughs> Anyways, F10, 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 F10. It's not a real error. Like, this is... It's like, treat type in errors like they're errors is like a good way to get your code, like, more robust. But empty speeds. Right, you say speed. Typically in this world, I would say velocity just because it's science or I don't know, um, velocities. Um, but I think a lot of this, I cannot remember how much of this survived in my refactor. Um, I also don't know how much of it's currently being used because often with these kind of mega scripts, there's just like big piles of dead like code that like never actually gets called. That's actually true in a lot of code, um, like dead branches and stuff like that. Um, these are your nice, yeah, oh yeah, this is your nice uh, anthropometry, anthropometry from Winter D, I think it's 1995, um, relative body dimensions, no, oh, 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 no, 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 ah, ooh, ah, Winter anthropometry. This guy. Is that right? Pelvis R 1.9. Yeah. 0. 0.191 of H, which is the full height. Uh, ooh. 
Ooh, look at you. Oh, how am I gonna save you? Look at that. I didn't know about that. Michael would want to see this. I want to see this. What? What? Are... These are almost certainly like copy pastas from references. Okay, I'm gonna post this. Um, I guess I'll do it in the public server. Why not? I'll post it in science. Oh, new clips. Thank you. I wish I had I wish I had the space to really like engage in this. I just don't. I'm just tired. Uh, found this interesting uh, anthropometry resource. Um, copy image link. I'll just copy the image. I don't think it'll including including cool things like this. Are you going to show us an image? I don't think you will. Discord. You should. Oh, no, you do. Good job. Uh, pointing up. Oop, no, wrong. It's <laughs> completely the wrong direction. Pointing up, Miegel. <clears throat> Secretly trying to get him to talk in the public server, but you know, there's so much of this stuff, and like, I feel like in teaching space and like open source space, where it's like you dangle the meat, but you can't tell anybody to work like you don't like I'm not paying like even the people that I am able to like technically pay I don't pay them nearly enough just at all I just don't I don't pay them enough for their value and their whatnot so all like the only reason why they could why they as rational agents would stay working in <laughs> my umbrella is because the work is intrinsically motivating in some way like teaching like it teaches them skills they want it does them do things they like um and that the opportunity cost of being able to do that cool fun interesting work is greater than uh the expected monetary value of working on other things using that same energy or just like not working at all right just like laying on a beach or something <sighs> so here's the meat <laughs> anyone anyone Anyone? Huh? 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 Hmm? huh? Okay. I'll do it. <laughs> F10. Um, it goes into him. Ugh. Okay, I don't want to do all that's that's not fun. Uh, continue. I think it's F5 in this world. Yeah. Uh, okay. Create a dictionary. Major bones. Nice. So these are the virtual bones, which I believe all major bones with their head and tail empties. I believe he's using virtual bones to, it's, yeah, I think it's just bones. I don't think we, uh, because like we have like trajectories and virtual trajectories because we have the measured trajectories and we have like the composed ones. like. We don't have a chest center, but we have a shoulder shoulder. So chest center is the average of those two points. So this is a virtual trajectory. Um, we don't have real bones, so we don't need to specify virtual bones. I think it's true. But then the naming matches regify. Um, so I might even want to call these like regify bones or something like that. Um, 
and then these names match media pipe uh media pipe and also like so hip center trunk center those are virtual trajectories like those like usually underscore center is a virtual trajectory um so this is going to touch on Philip's sort of regularization stuff where he's been pulling out as much of the uh, media pipe specific code, pulling, pulling all of it out so we can have like a more generic interface um, onto like different trackers and whatnot. Um, so we will have to figure out if something like this needs to change. Um, I think at this level of like Blender skeleton building stuff, um, we should not differentiate between virtual trajectories and measured trajectories, I guess is what we'll call that. Um, because at the level of Rigify and Blender, like it doesn't, it doesn't, like this guy doesn't care about the progeny of the trajectory. All it wants to know is like, what should I follow? Um, I also, I'll just say this out loud because I'm being recorded. Um, we currently use a, uh, put the trajectories in as keyframed empties and then having the bones and stuff sort of like, like we use like uh, a lot of like constraints and bone constraints to like, like drag the bones along with the frames on their keyframes, which does work. But like it, it never quite feels right because Blender doesn't seem to like that many keyframes. And every time I show it to an animated, like Jesus Christ, that's a lot of keyframes. Uh, and then also like a lot of the handles, like things just don't, it like doesn't quite, doesn't seem quite to fit right. It feels like a, it's like a, you know, like square peg round hole kind of thing. So like, and anytime you're like, oh, I'm, I'm willing off a lot of edges of my tool or like building a lot of interface, like, or just like you show it to an expert and they're like, ugh, uh, it's just like, you notice. <laughs> so I suspect that there might be a solution where instead of loading the trajectories as keyframed empties, we load them as like F curves or Bezier curves or NURB curves, something. Uh, and then do like the same, like, f I think it's like follow curve is the constraint as opposed to track, damped track or whatever. If you know, tell me, <laughs> because I don't know. Uh, and it's like, it's like, that's one of those things where it's like, this does work so that question of what should we use is, is unlikely to hit the top of my particular priority list anytime soon but if anyone has any thoughts do please share um anyway so this this dictionary so first of all he's using raw dictionaries interesting too i'm going back and forth between saying you and he um so these are raw dictionaries which you know again totally fine makes total sense uh typically so outside of Blender code, I would typically use a Pydantic model um, because those are, they have all this like validation and stuff built in. They're like super grumpy. Like they will not, like if you say that this is gonna be a, an integer and you give it a float, it'll crash, which is like annoying to set up, but it also means that like it's way less bug prone because you're like, you're just not allowed to make mistakes. And so if you try to put the wrong thing in, it crashes on startup as opposed to like later when you try to like, you know, set the frame number 2.3 or something like that. Um, in Blender land, uh, because there's a, I generally try to avoid having dependencies that I have to like install when I'm doing Blender code. I don't use Pydantic models um, just because it is a dependency. Also, a lot of Blender, it's like Pydantic models make it harder to write code. So it's like I, it, I always like like for like people who are, I don't want to say beginner because at this point you have like a lot of experience writing like code that people are using. So that's not beginner. That's not beginner. <laughs> Just so you know, writing code that many people are using, writing code that anybody but you is using, you're a software developer. You have made a tool that other people are using to their own benefit. Like you're not a beginner in case you started recently, but you're not a beginner. <laughs> uh, so like, but it is like, so pedantic is one of those things like you do have to understand types and you do have to understand like that there is a difference between like putting that the ints and floats are not the same thing. And um, 
and like you have to look like and the errors are not always the most scrutable um but because the nice thing about python is like it's relatively easy to get code up and running so that's what it's good for you know beginners students things like that um but because it's so friendly it is also more squishy and squishy things are hard to make tools out of <laughs> it's like you know like we make playground equipment out of friendly plastic we make tools out of steel it's like <laughs> there are pinch hazards um so it's like i don't know if i would recommend like using it if it's like it like try it if you bonk off of it don't do it i think which is what i like when endurance first told me about pydantic that's what happened like i i tried using it i couldn't figure it out uh and so i i stopped using it i came back to them later now also there is the machine what can explain things to you um so but again but even but in blenderland um Pydontic models is a dependency, so we avoid tendencies. So, but you can do um, data classes. Uh, stuff like this, which I think it's actually it's it's intent it's building it it's figuring it out for me. So, yeah. So this, yeah, it's interesting. Uh, Copilot takes longer in this big mega script. It, yeah. So basically the idea is like you make a data class um, and which is, these are built in. So this, and this is called the decorator. If you've never seen that before, switch back to you. Um, and so it's like, the idea is like this dictionary is a bunch of instances of this thing. Um, and so then this then could be written like, you know, uh, you're probably gonna figure this out for me, right buddy? You can do it. Yeah, right, stuff like that. Um, so, you know, again, it's logically equivalent. These, like a, a class in Python is a dictionary, a, especially a data class. Um, I think you can convert them straight to dictionary. I don't actually, I can't remember. Um, in, in Pydantic, it's like model dot to dict or to JSON or something like that. I don't know. Um, oh, yeah, you can have... Oh, yeah. Anyways. Um, not just calling it out as I see it. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, 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 blah. Ooh, uh, let's see. Mm. Where am I? Uh, unstack. Yeah. <laughs> See, now it's actually approaching. So we're almost two hours in. I just, I really enjoy doing this. <laughs> it's just, it feels, it's such like a, I don't know, I just like the, it's, it's, it's the work I was going to do anyways, but it feels like I'm communicating. So it just feels more like, like it's on the record. I've said these things. And so at least, yeah, anyways. When I make, when I create my simulacrum, it will be able, it will have these thoughts in its head because I've said it out loud. And also any humans that choose to inject these thoughts into their heads manually. <sighs> Wait, what was it? Control, what am I doing? I'm just kind of ticking through. Um, yeah, so these are all, so basically, oh yeah, these get into the hands. Um, so this bones dictionary defines all the rigid bodies uh, in the skeleton, plus hands. Um, and hands are complex. Do we know about this, the, hom the homunculus, the apocryphal homunculus? Homunculus. It's like, Apocryphal, I think. It's like this. Other, this is like one of the stories we tell to undergrads, but doesn't actually match like the real empirical data because it's like close enough. But this is, uh, like your. This is your sensory homunculus, like corticoidal expansion. This is your motor, like the amount of neural real estate associated moving your hands versus like your knee. Um, which again, it like this picture is not accurate it's like that is your motor cortex but this is not it's like yeah um yeah sensory versus motor 
Uh, it's always a guy. I've never seen a female one. Uh, but anyway, so there is like an interesting parody between this like cortical expansion of like the motor sensory areas and like the volume of data necessary to define the armature for the hands is like comp like I think literally you have as many like rigid bodies in your hands as you do in your full body and we're not doing anything for the face um, also a lot of the the length of, of this uh, script mega script file in it is um, oh we're back to thigh shin oh interesting okay um Yeah, but a lot of the length of, like, check this out. This is, this is just the hand stuff. And so 441 to 1143. So fully 700 lines is just like defining the hand bones. Um, so this is totally stylistic, um, but like I, and also like, possibly to be obviated when we move to other methods because I think this stuff I definitely had I definitely refactored into other stuff um, the data classes and things like that I think I can't remember I, but I did some flim flammer this is the model so you have model view controller um, this is the data model stuff the view is the user interface the controller is like the what I I call it the working code it's often called like the business logic um, and if I'm getting those terms wrong um, they're new to me. Uh, yeah, so pelvis, pelvis, spine, spine, neck, neck. So you go from the pelvis up to the head, right shoulder, left shoulder, and then you start bouncing back and forth, um, which I do see that. That's, that's how MediaPipe does it. I don't like that. Like, keep all the segments together. Again, completely stylistic. Dictionaries are not ordered. It, but like the way that the code is written is so in my head I want to kind of see like trunk you know I want to it's like and then it's like and then you can kind of choose okay we don't need to be looking at that <laughs> and then we can kind of choose it's like do you, do you want to go like right arm left arm right leg left leg or do you want to do like right arm right leg left arm left leg those are kind of hard to say and then do hands because so also I want I like to see like separation between uh, se separating the body from the hands so we have like free mocap data I'm, I'm like starting to like import implement this kind of separation between there's body data who is this guy body right hand left hand face those are the those are the data blobs that we export um, anyways, but yeah, this is this like, yeah, I also, I hope that you, when I was doing this kind of work pre GPT, um, a lot of that was like copy paste and then like find replace and like using like multi cursor stuff in VS code. Um, these days I sus I suspect that copilot can sort of handle a lot of that. Um, so I'm not sure if you have copilot and I'm not sure if we can, I wonder if we can get I wonder if we can get Copilot through FreeMoCat Foundation. We are a public charity, education-oriented public charity. Um, okay, yeah, and moving along. Hip center. Oh, yeah, this is, oh, yeah, I remember this. A lot of this is, like, memory lane because, like, I had this stuff before. Um... Why does it see changes there? I must have hit a line. I must have changed the line number. So these are the empties. Hip center. And then you define children category. Oh, is that new? That might be new. This, again, I think you're doing the thing I literally just said. Um, but I think you're doing it for your own purposes. I'll bet this has to do with the breaking it up into the smaller pieces thing, like defining core arms I don't know maybe you're just doing it for bookkeeping it's hard to say the other nice thing about having um, if this is a data class with like attributes then I could click on this attribute and like control B 
and see where that gets used. Um, because it's a raw dictionary, I can't do that. Like I could do like a string search for that, but like that's that's glumpy. Um, so but yeah, it's I I support the endeavor in any case. And like yeah, defining things in terms of their children is a really good idea and the hierarchy. Like defining things hierarchically. I don't conceptually I don't think it should be like at the level of empties. I think I want to have like a more generic like skeleton definition thing. Um, related, I think, to this, like, like the anthropom the anthropometric side of stuff, and I know that Philip has been working in this space. Anyways, da 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 I hope that you had a, I hope you had a, <laughs> I'm certain you've, you've had some system for doing that. You didn't type all that by hand. If you did, there'd be more bugs. Unless you had to fix them all manually. <sighs> They're gendering it. Who? Who are you saying this to? I wonder how they I wonder how they present this data. Like this is how it is. Or this is what we say, even though we know it's not true. Um because also like these hip pivots is like hip pivot. No. This is the beauty of like having studied study something for a while, is like you I although I am often very I'm like super like, oh, like, you know, like we don't know some things and knowledge is squishy. I can see some things. I'm going to be like, ha ha, wrong. <laughs> That's not where your hip pivot is. It's like down here. People don't like hips don't make any sense. We get them like our intuitions on your pelvis is our intuitions on our pelvises. Pelvis is the pel pelvis, pelvis wild, pelvis wild, uh, the most phylogenically distinct osteological structure in the animal kingdom. Skulls are weird. Pelvis are wild. Maybe Skelly should be a pelvis. <laughs> no. Uh, maybe. Well, I do love, like, I mean, I, I love a good skull, but, like, pelvises, though. <sighs> okay, where are we at? IK constraints. This is new. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Uh, Michael. That's a thing I want to be able to do. I want to be able to call, like, it's like, this is like a fucking hour, two hour video. If I, if I was chopping it up in the 20, 20, 25 minute chunks, um, and then running, running the, the audio through the machine, I could actually call out individuals, which is what I want to do. Be able, I, I want to be able to say like, Hey, Michael, like, look at this part. Um, and the only way I currently have to do it is either to remember and do a timestamp, which I'm not going to do, um, or say, hey, Michael, watch this two-hour video. Somewhere in there I mentioned this thing that might be relevant to you. Um, because this is OpenSim stuff. Like The stuff he's doing in OpenSim is this. It's inverse kinematics. Um, and like scientists would be like, well, how do we know that it's accurate? It's like OpenSim is hot garbage. Like, have you seen the, the bullshit that happens when people who are intelligent and trained use it? Nothing. It, like, blows up. Like, it's like, I'm sorry. Like, you need to refactor your code. Like, I'm sorry. Like, it's not, like, I know that FreeMocap has a garbage broken interface, and that bothers me, and it's going to be fixed soon. OpenSense has been around for a decade, over, over a decade, and I've tried it, and I'm good at this, and I can't figure it out. That means it's a bad UI. Sorry. So, uh, I suspect that the stuff that Blender is doing is, is just as good or better than the fancy pro-grade open sim stuff that everybody uses in clinical research, even though it's... If the developers are watching, love you, respect you, whatever, but, like, user interface matters. User experience matters. Scientifically, it matters. It's not like a side project, and I know that you don't have the the, the 
the skill level, the skill, you don't have the available effort. It's, we, all of science is done by students. And this is not an indictment of students. It is an indictment of science. <sighs> the funding boards, they don't reward. I'll get you. I'll burn you all, burn the whole thing to the ground. No, I won't. It'll just burn and I'll laugh as it's, as it's happening. It is already burning. I am not burning it. But I might be buying marshmallows is what I'm saying. Okay, yeah, this is your new stuff. Also, why is everyone, like, stealing my steeds with the sparkles, man? I've been doing this for longer than y'all. No, I haven't. Everyone uses sparkles, but everyone started using sparkles. Um, and I just want to make sure that the world knows that I was doing it before everything in AI started having sparkles on it. <sighs> I invented the sparkle emoji. I didn't know. Just joking. Um, I did steal the double emoji thing from, like, I noticed a lot of crypto projects would tag themselves with double emoji, so I just chose Skull Sparkle. Um, with uh, taught with uh, Taylor Davies, who designed Skelly. Boy, that was a fun process. She did such a good job. It wasn't a one shot. It was like an iterative thing, and it was I enjoyed it. Uh, <laughs> big head Skelly. That's funny. That's funny. Oh my god, that's hilarious. That's like um, Golden Eye. Oh, also, like, the linter, the auto format didn't get that. Uh, remember back then? Remember when we did that? Where are we at? Oh, these are the parts. And, okay. Origin of the bones or bones and zero, zero length positional offset, adjust rotation, adjust rotation of the mesh after applying the position offset. Okay. I would probably just put like a rotation offset and set it to be zero by default, but I don't know how this is being used, so who knows. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, these are the, oh, these are local origins to the mesh. Yes, this is exciting. This is what you meant when you were talking about I could change the offset of the femur. Um, for the for my my strong hip based opinions. I think Thingiverse is no longer the go to. But next project. Good project. No, thank you. I like that guy. It's very uh, Metropolis art. Deco? Nouveau? Deco Dent? Where are we at? Oh, these are still bones. Mesh length. I'll, be, I'll bet you did have to put these numbers in. I'll bet you copy pasted um, and then changed the name and, the, and these numbers. Most of them are zero because that's what I did when I was doing like before I had copilot and stuff like that. And, you know, a lot of these just increment by number. Um, and then once you do the right hand, you can copy paste the left, stuff like that. So it doesn't take that long, but it's, it is, appreciate the effort. <coughs> and now we're into the functions. So, this is this was the thing when I first looked into the mega script and I was like, oh no, it's a mega script. But then I looked closer and I was like, oh, actually, that's great. That's totally fine because it it is a mega script, um, which is fine. Uh, we talked about that, um, but it's already it is split up into chunks and specifically it is split up into like model view controller schema in general. Um, and actually, like view JS also uses um, like they use like single page component structure they're not supposed to be this long but it's the same idea where like you put like like it might be a bit of a slant rhyme but it's like the model this is all model stuff like you're defining the data shapes and types and numbers and stuff like that um, data classes and stuff like that um, and then we get it in line 2000 <laughs> we get into um, like the working code like the business logic like the control the controller part of the model view controller. 
Um, when I was doing, back when I was living this life, I would do stuff like, <laughs> uh, ooh, actually, yeah, da da da. Ooh, yeah. Mm -mm. I don't recommend this uh, anymore, but it does. Ooh. Don't do this, but if you're gonna do it, you might as well do it with style. Um, mm. Functions, or like, I don't know, uh, working code. Uh, what you, it, I don't know if it's all functions, it might be classes, but I think it's all functions, so I just like, functions. So that way you can see it in the mini map over here. So when you're doing like this, the big scrolls, um, I also have a mouse that has like a free, like there's a button, so it does click, click. And then there's like this one that does free, which <laughs> it's like it's, I love that. Um, but when you do that big chunk thing there, it's easier to see it when you're scrolling around. Um, so I can see that there, but really just break up your code. Um, I also might've lied before. There might also be some, I do like this this mini map thing. It's 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 nice, but it also kind of encourages writing code that needs the mini map on the side, like this part here. So one of these things. Mm, I I saw some stuff that. Uh, is this in a method? I don't know. Anyways, I saw like see when I see stuff like this, I'm like, oh, actually, that might there might be some more model. Uh, but this might also just be like utilizing the model because I think you also write big functions, which is the same same thing. Uh, like it's better when they're small, um, but it's easier to write them when they're big. It's, you know, we get it. Um, okay, now this big yellow. I wonder what you are. This looks like just in the mini map. Oh, it says right here constraints. Yeah, so this is more like model stuff. So this should really go above. Um, I think that this uh, told me that this isn't a function. Yeah, add rig. Um, yeah, just move this, up, move this up. Treat it in the same way you treated the other ones. Because right now you're defining this locally. Um, like local, you're defining this in the scope of this uh, this function, um, which you know, logically is the same thing as importing it. It's just like you know separation of concerns, right? You already have a whole bunch of like sort of model definition stuff. Um, by the way, when I use the term model, like different communities, like that that word is used many different ways in many different places. So don't necessarily, you know, I'm using it specifically to mean like data definition stuff, like kind of like like dead parts of the code. Like it's never called, it just is. Um, so like just move it out there and import it. Um, I'm guessing this is one of those things like you realize you needed it while you were writing this function. Um, and so you wrote it as, as you went. Uh, oh, also a lot of Blender code is written in the scripting tab, which which really doesn't handle imports very well, if we're being honest. And also it's just, it's, you know, if I had, if I had the, if I, if I could, I would love to like, when I get funding, <laughs> And enough to like hire humans. One of the things I'm gonna want to do is to like, I, I would love to like really crank up the sophistication of the Blender scripting tab. Like give it like a like a debugger. Uh, maybe steal from Godot because they have that. Uh, except Blender, I think is written like C plus plus, so that might be harder. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Anyways, all this model definition stuff. Here's your constraints. Uh, and then you loop through the constraints. We're, we're still on the... Yeah, so... Yeah, right now, I'm just looking if there's any more definitional stuff. It shouldn't be there. Literally just, like, using the color up here. Um, export parameters. This is... I think this is FBX stuff. Yeah, so we're here... And you got this little chunk thing, so you can see it, that's already there. Um, and this was the stuff I wasn't sure if it was being duplicated. Okay. 
Oh, all the way up, all the way up. Okay, we're now at 10.30, two hours in. I'm not tired. I can still keep going. I'm having a great time. Um, but I do have a meeting at 11, and I'm going to be brain dead for it, and I think that's fine. And I, I can officially apologize to Andres for making it so long. It's like, hey, I gave you this thing. It's a deep dive into your thing. Also, I did a bunch of other stuff, which is unrelated, and it was not organized in any way. But, you know, it's like, you know, it's like a review. I would have killed for a review like this when I was learning how to write code. And I did. I didn't. I'm joking. That's not funny. A little bit. It's a little funny. Uh, did that work? Oh. Oh, is it control? It is. Collapse. Why didn't you why didn't you collapse? Is it because I was in? I guess. That's I guess that makes sense. Collapse everything that the cursor's not in. Okay. Um in the interest of getting through, because we're still in the init, we're not actually running this code yet. Uh, actually, maybe that's what it'll be. Maybe I'll do, I'll, I'll probably, because we're currently doing basically what's, like, this is static code analysis. We're just looking at the code and, like, I'm like, oh, import this. Oh, like, you know, move this over there. Um, none of it's looking at, like, the logic of the code. Uh, it's just the structure of the project is really what we're talking about now. Um, so... I think it would make sense to, I'll, I'll, when I get through the static part, which is probably coming up pretty soon, because um, I don't think there's much left to say, we'll, but we'll see. I'll cut it there, and then later I'll come back and do like a, like run the code and put the breakpoints in the debugger and like see what's actually happening in the, the, the business logic. I like to say, like, it makes sense, I'm starting to get used to it, but I just don't like it because it has the word business in it. It's like, pfft, it's like, <laughs> You talking about IBM <laughs> not in use that's funny it's why is it then why is it here is it just this is like it doesn't work but it was hard to make and I don't want to get rid of it um, which is actually fine uh, it just but I do appreciate that you're calling it out which makes me this so something like this makes me wonder does that mean everything else is being called or, or, or does it just mean that this is definitely not being called, and everything else sort of depends on? It's like how much has you like how it, it really just depends on. This is like a, like a thing with like this is the thing with comments. Comments can be wrong. Uh, it is possible for you to write them and that they're wrong. So typically, you just wouldn't say this. You would just kind of notice by the usage. I don't know. Okay, so here we are in the init. So when in lifecycle stuff. So when we load the add-on, when we register the add-on, which we, again, we only happened the first time, it goes through this, uh, it, it hits, it calls this init.py somewhere in the Blender code, in the guts of Blender, and then it, it just runs the code from top to bottom. And um, in these dictionaries and stuff like that, it does pull like it goes through each line that's why i was like i i don't want to like step over because it takes forever to get through all this stuff because it actually is getting the data um into memory into random access memory and I, either one you know in this case it's on your computer um so that later on when that add-on needs to access that data it's already in memory and that's what's happening in this initialization part um And so and instead of stepping over here, I just, I'm going to click continue. Did I break it? I may have broke it. Uh, BX, bye, bye, bye. Uh, wait, I have to go through and nuke everything again. Uh, maybe I am getting tired. I am getting tired, actually, yeah. Uh, wait, so it's here. I don't have to go into Blender. Wait, I kind of do, though. Because uh, I think I want to... I'll just do the same order of operations. So there, click there, free mocap, uh, turn you off. The other ones did not show up again, so that's good. At least it's going to be like, I don't know what a simulink. I say yes. And it's like, I don't know how to handle this shortcut thing. 
Um, and then I say again, I wish I understood this app date versus local versus roaming versus whatever. Uh, and then I say again, I wonder if this is happening because I moved it into my user folder. Maybe if it was in the main folder, it wouldn't be a problem. And then I say, boy, I wish that uh, I was using Linux and I wasn't using Windows, except that I was using Linux and it broke and I couldn't restart it, so I have to reinstall it, which is kind of part of the reason why people don't use Linux. Uh, and now we're back. Um, so now I can kill all these breakpoints, put one here, uh, Alt BB, hit the thing, and now it should run straight up to there. And I see all these things are now, like everything above this is now in the, the local variables space, which you get to see because of the debugger. Right? See, there they all are. Look at them go. Okay. Um, but we are getting tired, and we also don't have much time before 11 o'clock. So we're just going to kind of speed up here. So yeah, lifecycle, uh, initializing the thing. It's it loads up all those dictionaries and stuff like that. So those those number those are all so in this runtime, like while it's up and running, all that data is available to the Blender application or whatever the hell out however the hell that works. I don't really fully know. Um, and I think that the way Blender works is every time you open it, it re-registers the add-ons, which is why which is we encountered some annoying bugs with that yesterday because like if an add-on is broken, it means you like your blender like won't start up properly. Um, at least maybe or it started up, but like when we hit it from free mocap, it threw an error. Is the life cycle different on command line than if than in the application? <sighs> too many, too many, too many stuff. Drink too much milk. <laughs> okay. When you initialize, you load up all of the the constants. I think is what I think these things are called constants. I think that's true because they don't change. And I also think that stylistically, your sub constants are supposed to be all caps, uh, like like these screaming snake case I think is how you denote constants um, like anything you any static dictionary data definition thing that you import or that is importable um, I think is supposed to be screaming snake case I think that's pep 8 guidelines I'm not 100% sure though the machine would know that um, so anyways as we go over here so we're not Unlike the dictionary where it goes through every line, we are not going to go, like when I hit F10, it's going to hop to the next function. Because what it's doing is it's not loading it into memory. It's just loading, it's like saying, oh, hey, Python, by the way, you also have access to this function. And this function takes in these parameters and with this type, but it doesn't actually check. It won't fail if that type is wrong because Blender is, because uh, so, Python is not strongly typed. It is, they have, it has recently become weakly typed. Um, because they added these type hints. Wait, that might. I think that might be wrong. I think I don't, weakly type might not be a thing. Strongly type means it will die if the types are wrong. Soft typed? Anyways. Um, but like if there's a bug in this logic, it won't crash on init. If there's a broken part of the dictionary, it will crash on init. Um, this won't crash until you call this function. So that's why like later I said I'll come back. And we'll put breakpoints in here and look at what happens when we actually call the functions. Because um, that, yeah, anyways, I think this is, yeah, anyways, so we're just sort of bouncing through. So we're registering these functions and telling everybody that they're available. F10, 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 F10. What? Wait, why we're in here? Oh, it, it the functions and the, what their inputs are. Uh, oh, and you're also now specifying the output, which is also great. We... I think, did you, did I say, I think I said the Philip. I think I may have said out loud last Friday that type hints are good. Um, so if you heard that and then started doing it, great. But I think you may have already been doing it. I can't remember. <sighs> the machine would remember if it had a profile of your progress. <sighs> it doesn't. Why are we doing this again? Is it registering the default values?
Now it's going to jump. IK pole quadratic functions. Okay, I don't know. Oh, <laughs> proper math. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I keep. This is the part where it's like. Speaking of, I've talked about things like that your code makes you think you don't understand, like imports and stuff like that. Your code makes you think that you do understand, like the guts part of the math, like the actual computational mathy stuff makes me think. I think you said that you had some, what's the electrical engineering or something degree and some kind of engineering degree, which I do not. So I see stuff. I get, I can do it, but I still have like a, ah, and like, I, <laughs> it's like anytime I see it's like, like names, like variable names, I'm just like, oh, oh, oh it's this code you should still use type hints, but these, I'm guessing they're all floats. But like, yeah. This is also a place where like, I I usually say like long variable variable names are good. Um, and in this case, I I kind of sometimes would want it to be. I guess I guess that's t is probably target. I don't know what y is. Um, I can often forgive. I I like these kind of like pure math functions the variable name like like really short variable names i can forgive that because i know that that is like like math is written like xyz stuff like that um but also like if i if there is like a, if there is a name that does work did i break something i did like if the if t is target then i might want to see to say target um, if Y is pole, but that may not be true. And this might just be this, this, it might be also that like this function is so generic that like those, like, like defining that variable as a, oh, that's the target is like not actually accurate because this function is more general than that, but whatever. Um, math is cool guys. Just empties. Yeah. This is the same kind of thing. Like you, you sort of you 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 are leaving bookmarks for yourself, um, for your for for your scroll throughs. Uh, it's fine. When I first started working with endurance, I showed him like, "Hey, look at this cool way I can like show myself where you are in here." And he's like, "Yeah, we're gonna fix that for you." And I was like, "What do you mean fix? It's a, a cool thing I do." He's like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> This is the same thing as like the making the colons line up in columns. It's like I, I, it is it's nice. It does look nice, um, but we don't do it like that. We the culture of people who have been trying to figure out how to write code since like, whatever Trace Hopper, whoever figured that out. Uh, Ada Lovelace, algorithmy. Uh, where are we? I'm tired. I want to be done. F10. F10. Meh, 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 meh. Okay. So it also, it does hit all the things. I suspect it hits it twice if they have a default. I guess we can check that. Go through all the things. You can hit it again. I think it's it's pulling the default values when it does that. <laughs> F10, F10, F10. <sighs> uh, what is it? Uh, control K1. And I learned it all from control K1. So yeah, so we go through, we register all of these things. And now, so start with the, we started with model data definitions. We got through the controller business logic, the functions, like the working code, the stuff where like the computation happens. Um, and now we're getting into the view or the user interface, like the thing that we show the user and so they can click the button and set the parameter. So again, like, I think you said you had encountered these the concept of MVC before, so it, it was not. I think you you knew about it, but it's a it, it wasn't a it, your first your original code that I looked at was like that. I mean, this is that class of, and that was like, it's yeah, it's a that's why I was like, oh, this is a five thousand long script, but it's it's a nice five thousand long script um, file. It's not really a, you know, this it's whatever. It is a script because it's just like a one file thing. I don't know. Um, so yeah, and it's just like chopping it up, you know, and 
Yeah, and like the linter hates it because it's using weird Python, weird uh, um, BPY Blender code. Um, Blender also has like a lot of sort of like Blender Python's a wild, wild thing because they they I think it's just like it evolved organically over such a long time through like open source collective effort that there's just like it's like the logic makes sense but you do have to kind of wrap your head around it um it has a lot of context because it's like are you in pose mode or are you in view 3d or whatever like you know like what like what is the active object what is what's selected what's active like changes a lot like and that's, that's a lot of i consider that's a lot of like sin of global state that's just like I don't know if it's fixable at this point without like a really hardcore refactor. And I don't know if it needs to be because it's like at this, when you're writing blender Python, it's like you're right. This is a user interface and it's, it, it's robust enough and it's big enough and it's venerable enough that like it deserves to have, it has earned the right to have its own internal logic. Um, and you know, like, do you want to fix it? <laughs> Is it need to be fixed? So, but they so they do a lot of stuff like they use screaming state case uh, for their class names. Um, they have like these property groups and like they have they define their own properties. Like I don't fully understand everything in how like I'm still wrapping my own head around it. But again, the machine. Oh my god, the mach like asking the machine questions about Blender Python because again, it's been online fully open source for such a long time. It just seems to have a good. It it seems to understand it. Open source plus AI. This is how we win. The skeleton, the skeleton game. Okay. Um, so yeah. So this is. But yeah. So this one thing I love about your add-on is that, like the the add-on I made is designed to just be like click the button once and it all runs. That's like what the main focus of it. Yours has a lot more control. Um, so really, we want to be merging these things together. So there's still the click the button and then everything runs through. But there is also like you can set the defaults to the values be different things. You can run each part individually, um, and things like that. Uh, I remember I wound up having to because you have because you use global, like you define like empties and stuff like that. You define these globally. Um, there was some logic I had to shift around to like make that to manage that independently, uh, separately. Um, but I already did it. So I don't, and I, it, I don't think it's complete. I think that actually the error that often happens where like the mesh gets like squished to some other place, I think is because of something not being properly reset when you run another, uh, recording, but that's a bug that I'm pretty sure is fixable. Um, Yeah, so you have, but this is nice. Like, this is all UI code. Um, the, the yellow is a rare material. Um, and yeah, the user interface is really, I think, how you, that's how you show love to your users. Um, because it's like you're giving them control. You're telling them, hey, I've, I've, I'm really trying to make this a good experience for you. I'm trying to make as many things controllable as you can, as, as I can. Um, but it is a skill thing. Like it's hard, like, you know, making code that's, it's easier to make brittle tools. Um, making something that's flexible is more difficult. Um, but yeah, and this is where you yeah, your stuff. Yeah. Your, your Butterworthy stuff, which is cool. Like fil filtering the individual parts with different Butterworth filters. Love that. Um, also, yeah, the, the, the Blender 4, like, Butterworth slider, <laughs> so cool. Love that. Like different parts of different time series of individual, so much good control. In different reference frames, you have like the global versus the like you def you can filter it globally versus in like local relative to like like filter the hand relative to the wrist kind of thing. Like I don't even know, I haven't even fully wrapped my head around like what's happening mathematically geometrically there, but it's like conceptually, I'm like that sounds right. That sounds great. Do that. <laughs> Uh, UI panel class, adjust empties. Yeah, I changed some of the names. Um, I think adjust empties, I think that's like putting the skeleton feet on the ground. That's a problem that will be obviated by an upgrade to the calibration methods, but we'll get there. 
Um, reduce, reduce bone length discursion. I, I think I call that enforced rigid body assumption or something like that, because that's a, that's a tag to a broader topic area. Rigid body assumptions are kind of like part of the conceptual space of like kinematic analysis, I guess. Um, ad rig, uh, I don't remember this part. Oh, this is for like the weird, like <laughs> the, 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 like, uh, so this is, mm, I'm, I'm like literally running out of time now. Um, yeah, I just, I wonder if this is, if this wants to be for everything. Like if we want to have, cause like, you know, like setting the, 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 all, all joints should have rotation constraints, right? Like that should be, that's a way that we can clean things up. Um, And we really we want to be accessing the joint angles and stuff like that anyway. Apply Butterworth filter. So yeah, so it's the naming convention. So FMC adapter is like the global, like, I actually don't know if the name is, if this is a, this is like a code thing. Like, I don't know if this is by convention or by necessity. Like, I don't know if like, if we change this something else, if it would break, or if it's just like, we recommend that you name it like this so it's easy to keep track of. Like it'll sort properly if you're ever looking at a list of all of your available UIs, which I don't know if we can. If we, if we can't, I would like to. Um, and this is another thing I don't love about Blender stuff is like it uses strings here. Like it's looking for a string um, called this, and this is like uh, so you have to. Uh, what is it in this world? Control D. Right, so it's look it's it it wants the string that is the name of the function that it that it's looking for. I th yeah this right this ot is operator I think in Blenderland, which is different from which again I I, I think it must be functional at that point or uh, necessary. PT is I think panel. Region type is UI, space is view 3D. It, it's, it's just, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's whatever. It's cool. Uh, we're almost at the end. We're at 6,000. All the UI stuff. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, see? And then he, these are all your class. This is, and this is the part. So right now we've been creating all of these things, registering them in memory and whatnot. Here's your dictionary. Here's your classes. Um, and then this register function is where it acts, where Blender actually notices it for the first time. Um, uh, so all of that dictionary definition stuff like that doesn't need to be in the init file at all. Um, this does. Uh, and so to clear out... So this this is the only part that needs to be in here. Uh, I think actually also this main block does. Yeah, this this is the only part that needs to be in here. The register, unregister, blah, blah, blah. So you could literally take all of this. Um, I think also that BL info needs to be in there. Control X. Um, uh, I'm gonna run out of time. It's fine. I'm just meeting with Andreas, so I'll just tell him if I need time. I'll just feel like I need some time. <laughs> uh, control V, Control S. Uh, <sighs> what are we gonna call it? I'm gonna call it working code. You can't stop me. Traditionally, people would call that like utils or ops or whatever. Um, but we're, I'm not going to commit this. I'm just doing it to show. Um, and so right now, it's like it, it's not hap. Oh, I missed some. Oh, I chopped some.
x. And go over here, control all, delete v, save. Um, and so it's not happy, it can't see these here. Oh, uh, I think control period will work. Yes, it will. Control period, this is auto import built in. So I hit control period, it looks through my code, like this repository, this workspace, finds something with that name and then imports it. No code actions available. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Well, can I just do all of it? Is there a way to do this all at once? So I do think that PyCharm is better at this. I think it works just a little better, a little faster. Um, WebStorm has an option to just like auto import everything that's missing, which I love that. That might, but that might be like something special you get from JSTS Web Debbie Life. So notice what, I, what just happened, right? So to register this, oh, I also need to import BPY. To register this, I only need to run this, and that needs to have a list of classes, and so and it's going to iterate through them and then register them there. Um, so what we do here is we just define. <coughs> It hit this, oh, it's not control B. In VS Code land, it's F12. Yeah. Um, so that, this class is defined over here. Um, as opposed, uh, in, in, in just like we import it. And so just like here, I don't want to actually do this because I'm going to be done. Like remember when we ran this and it hit the init and it's like it went through and I'm like, oh, it's registering the classes and stuff like that. Um, this time if we ran it on this line, it would jump into free mocap adapter dot working code, which is here, in order to import these things. And when it when it hit this code, it would do the same thing of like incrementing through. Um, and like it, this pulls all these. So then you can also, you know, I don't want to do it right now, but like we could in the same way we moved everything to working code, we could move this into model definitions. And then you're no longer in mega script land, you're in like you know, big chunky script land. So now that you have the init file, you always should, your init should always be as small as you can get it. Um, and then you have the working code, then you have the model definitions. And then you can also move the UI over somewhere else. And then you have like user interface. And then you have um, three chunks that are at least separated by, you know, type or whatever. Um, and then, you know, once you've done that, you can break that up in different pieces and now you have a bunch of files. Now your file manager has a bunch of stuff in the top level, which we don't love, so we pull it into a subfolder and now it's a now it's a submodule. And you put an init file in that subfolder just so that it knows to look for it. That's a, don't worry about the whole other thing. Oh, I bet that's oh, god damn it. I bet that's is it just looking for init? It's it's just registering the inits. That's how that's how that extension is working. It's just looking for init files. That's like default Python behavior. Init or something. Anyways, so that's how that's how you start breaking things up. Um, and like, yeah. But before, I'll bet you were like, oh man, I know it. Somehow you found something that was like, oh, you got to register these classes. When I say you, I mean like me when I was writing mega scripts. <laughs> uh, and you're like, well, I don't know how to make this happen, but I know it. But if I just define it in this file, I know it will be available when I need to run it. And so that's so there you go. Uh, and then unregister, I think, is it's a built-in that needs to be there for it to work. Okay. Cool. Great. And then if we release the debugger, it should go through. Um, click on that, and then over here on the side, N, we, um, free mocap adapter alt, which is the name here, and like, here's all your cool guys. And they, I have, oh, I haven't looked at these, they look, it looks great, it really does, it looks so nice, you got these, you're just using all these things, you got, oh, you got a slider, you got that cool thing, I love that, you could probably do this like, th can you do this like this? Yeah, oh, oh, love that. 
uh, you got this cool thing that says, hey, you got to install this thing for it to work. Appreciate that. And you got the numbered clickums. Um, all we would really need is just a big one on top that says run all. And then another thing that uh, basically the ones that mine has, which is like uh, select the recording folder and run all. And then run all would just run through each of these steps, you know, one through one. And we could actually probably put check boxes on them so we can run different levels of the pipeline. <sighs> At which point, like, we can do... We can make the free mocap... We could just put all the free mocap into Blender. I don't... I want it to be independent, but I also... It could also just run off from Blender, I think. I don't... I don't want to hitch my wagon too hard, but... Mostly because I, I want to... I do standalone is important I think this is the difference like we should exist independently of other groups if we can to the extent that we can it's good to exist independently um, Jesus uh, but it's an option mostly because like also all the complaints I have about blender um, under the hood stuff but I do like, there's a lot of things I like about it. Also, it's bouncy for new, that, that's the biggest one, is it's bouncy for newbies. Uh, Blender has a lot of complexity, and there's a lot of, like, sticker shock. Like, you open it, it's like, oh, there's a lot of stuff. Um, so making the friendly, big, pretty buttons version of free mocap is still, still needs to happen. Um, okay, cool stuff. Uh, love it uh two and a half hours um and i'll come back later and do like an actual like in the guts code review i don't know exactly when um because i actually do need to like i need I, there's i need to do work um but this is blender three i guess this is the third video i'm out bye Mwah.